Welcome to the Relisha Blocks podcast. I am your host, Victoria Bond. Join me as we chat about mindset, consciousness, and turning up your potency so you can get clear on your divine mission here on earth. I'm a spiritual empowerment coach. I use intuition, mediumship, and life coaching with my clients so they can create the life they truly desire. I believe we are here to be wealthy and healthy. If you desire more of this in your life, then this is the podcast for you. My mission is to share my knowledge of entity clearing, shifting limiting beliefs, and becoming more conscious within our bodies and minds so we can fulfill our life's purpose. I will be bringing you weekly podcasts with interviews, solos, and pre-recorded juicy lives from my socials. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy the podcast, and if you do, I would love you to please follow me here and find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find a heap of free inspiration and information to shift the energy and grow abundance. Now let's get into today's episode. Hello everybody, and welcome to today's podcast. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects and it's relationships. It is all about having a relationship with a person that you may have children with, you may not, but the the companion that you are choosing to be with currently. And the reason why I like to talk about this is because I have been in a relationship from 16 years old. The moment I saw my husband They were picking me up from the service station where I worked. He was coming along with my best friend. I had never met him before. I hopped in the car and I went, oh my God, I'm going to be with him. I just knew in my heart of hearts that I was going to be with him. I didn't know why. It was just an energy. And I was like, oh my gosh. I had a boyfriend at the time. So I thought, what? What is going on? So I went straight home. I broke up with my boyfriend, literally. And I spent the rest of the day with my husband. And by the end of the night, I knew I was going to be with him for the rest of my life. It was just this deep knowing. And it was actually beyond the whole lust thing because I had barely seen him before I knew this. I was 16. I was young. I was very naive. And I was from a little beach town and worked in a service station. And I was all about having joy and fun. I was all about the wonder of the world. So as you can imagine, being with someone this young was hard work. Because for the next however long, we had to grow up together. We had no book on how to do this. We had no advice on how to do this. We had to manage each other as we were growing up, going through pain, going through what are we going to do with our careers, going through the flatting kind of phase and the party phase and the drugs phase and all of these different things that teenagers go through. And we were those teenagers. We were the teenagers that wanted to experience. He was into his cars and I was into wanting to go party and nightclub and move away from this little tiny town and this big family I was from to experience life. I wanted to experience everything. So with that came a lot of pain, came a lot of pain with how different we were together. And I'm just giving you this backlog of the story because this is relevant when it comes to our relationships now and what we're doing in life and how we can work together. So basically, the long and the short of it is when we got to our early to mid 20s, we'd been together for like seven years and we broke up and we had nothing to do with each other for two years. We weren't bringing each other joy. We were engaged to get married. We had the whole wedding planned. We had everything right down to the dresses and the flowers and the food all ready to go in the venue. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. We were both depressed, miserable. I was drinking like two bottles of wine. It was just too much. Every day was too much. So we broke up and we went on this like path of self-discovery, each of us. And one day we chatted on the phone, like after two years and my partner was like, what do you, what do you want from me? And we started talking about stuff and I go, I don't know, you've just been popping into my mind and been reading this book. It was called New Earth from Eckhart Tolle. And he said, I'm reading the same book. And we both aren't readers. So we're like, oh my God, that's weird. And basically we both tapped into consciousness and we both refound each other. And even though we were living in different parts of the country, like massively, we got back together after about five months of chatting. We had to relearn who we were and who we had become as individuals. 
and now we've got two children and we're onto our third home and we have a business and we work together and life is amazing. So how did we get from pain to having an amazing, pleasurable existence where we're friends? So even when I had my children, I used to scream at Luke and say, you're not helping me. You're not hearing me. You're not seeing me. And he would go into his shell and I... I would just be knocking on that shell, trying to get in, trying to get something. And so many of us, I don't know if you relate to this or not, but how many times when we require attention or to be heard, we start picking fights or we start doing things to get attention because we want to be seen or heard. The reason why Luke and I had such a hard relationship to begin with is because we had to mimic. We were still young. We were only 16 and 17. We were mimicking our parents and we were so madly in love and it didn't matter for the first year or so, but stuff started getting really, really hard when we were trying to navigate how a relationship is supposed to work. What are the roles that we're meant to play? How is this supposed to work? We want to go out and party and have fun. We never wanted to be with other people per se, but we wanted to have the experience and we had no, like I said before, no guidebook on how to do that. I was never taught how to have massive respect in a relationship. I was never taught what to do. So with the need and the want of having more and getting more, like you want to start getting the homes and getting married and having children. And I was following what I thought I was supposed to do. And I just kept finding myself miserable because it wasn't what I was truly wanting. It's what I thought would make me happy. So the biggest thing about having a relationship and what my partner, I, my husband and I did was we started respecting ourselves, working on ourselves so we could fill ourselves up and find what made us happy, what made us tick, what did we believe in within ourselves and what were the standards of life we were choosing? What were we choosing? So what I quite often do with my clients is I get them to do a little um, exercise where they have negotiables, non-negotiables, and the external. So you start off with non-negotiables. What is it that is super important for you to achieve in life? It's a non-negotiable. And then on the outer circles, you can do this in circles, like a smaller one, and then a one around that and one around that. The outer circle is what is negotiable. So like, is children negotiable to you? Do you want to have children or not? Um, If you met the love of your life and they don't want kids, but you want it so much, if that is a non-negotiable, then the relationship is not going to work. If it's a negotiable and you're looking at them and you go, they've got everything else they want, then it could work. But too many of us go into relationships on feelings. Oh, just like I did with my partner. Oh my God, I just, I just knew, I just knew. But I never had the tools to go, okay, what is it that I'm choosing and desiring to achieve here? And does he fit into that? Because I was 16, I was a child. I have been with my husband for longer than I was with my parents for. So he is a really significant part of my life. And I realized when we got back together in our mid twenties, once we started getting to know each other, because those first seven years, we didn't know each other. We just demanded from each other. I demanded for him to make me happy. I thought a relationship and like signing a piece of paper was basically a contract to say, now you have to make me happy. And so many marriages do this. So many people expect their partners to make them happy. This will never work. So I'm all about following the energy, but I also have extremely high standards. And I know what my non-negotiables in life in a relationship are. If everybody did this, and especially if you're single now and you're looking for a partner, I highly recommend you do this. It's going to save you a hell of a lot of time with dating people and trying to figure out, because we go into this thinking, oh, we're going to be lucky if we get a really nice person who does this and this and this. But it's really about, just like with manifesting, putting out that vibration, that frequency of your perfect match. You're going to have to, if you're talking about the Konark scale, you're going to have to match them. Because if you're a high achiever and money is important to you and abundance is important to you and your friends are important to you and you're dating somebody that you really like, but none of those things are important, 
then you're going to have conflict. So going back to my relationship, I realized that there was this kind of conflict going on and we weren't happy and we were both depressed and we had the children in the house and the family that we truly desired. So how the heck could we not be happy? And we basically didn't have the respect for ourselves and each other that we should have had. And when you have the expectations of your partner to bring you happy, you will never be happy because happiness comes from internally. And I never, ever, ever expect my husband to make me happy now, ever. But for the first 18 years, I did. I expected him to make me happy. And that is a really big ask to ask somebody else to make you happy. It is not real. So the best thing to do in a relationship is to fill up your cup. The best thing to do is to grow consciously, grow your knowledge, grow your awareness, grow your superpowers or download your superpowers. The best thing that you can do is to do you, to make sure that you're okay because the kingdom of you (laughs) will help the kingdom of we and the kingdom of we is everything. But if you are running on half empty, then so is your relationship. And so is your business. And so is your family. So by filling yourself up is the most selfless thing you could ever do. When you are overflowing with self-love, it flows onto them. But if you are trying to put your family and your relationship before yourself, then what happens is you're giving, 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 giving to your partner while you're depleting yourself. So it's nearly like you're sacrificing yourself because you weren't full to begin with. And If they ask for one more thing, you're going to snap at them. You're like, I'm tired. I've been doing this. I'm doing this and this and this, especially when you've got children in a business or if you work full time or you've got friends, we're all busy, right? And if you're not taking that time out to notice yourself and you're depleted and they ask you for something, you get your back up. And that's what I used to do. I'd be like, I've just been looking after children all day and I've been working and I've done this and this and this and this. And now you want to cuddle? And literally a cuddle, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, it's having a a cuddle. We should be able to go to our partners every day and embrace and just hug and just do an exchange of gratitude and love to fill each other up. We should be able to do that. But if you're functioning on empty and exhaustion and you're over-functioning like um, so many people in this world, trying to do everything, now that we've got all of this amazing technology, we're, we're so lucky. It has never, ever been a time like this in the world where we can achieve so much. And that comes at an expense. And if you don't know how to stop, and go into your feminine energy and reboot your system and give yourself the time that you require to rest, then how are you going to do that for someone else? How are you going to be the space for them to come to you to receive love? So starting with yourself is just so important. The reason why people don't do this a lot is because of the judgment of others. I remember getting a lot of judgment when I chose this journey. And I said to my husband, I'm going on this journey and I won't stop. I'll never quit. And I'm committing to myself, whatever may come. And I'm doing this because I love you and I love our kids and I want to love myself. And he said, I love you and I support you and do whatever you have to do. If our relationship ended after that, if he didn't choose to work on himself too, it could have ended. And we would have had to be okay with that. When they say, if you love someone, let them go. That is what that saying is all about. You must love you. You must be able to look at yourself in the mirror and go, I love you. You must be able to forgive yourself for the stupid shit that you think you said, or for that time that you did that, or this, or this, or that. You will constantly fuck up. It's just what happens. But Don't make yourself wrong. Just love yourself and forgive yourself and be whatever you require to be. And it's just trusting that and knowing that the person that you love, they will follow and energetically invite them to follow. So what I did was I was just really honest with my husband and I said, like, 
I'm going to have to get myself out of this hole and I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I'm sorry, but I've got nothing to give you. And he was broken because of course our partners, they want to help us. They want to heal us. And quite often men get angry when they can't do that because they want to be the person, the hero. They want to be the person who helps you, but they can't because you have to help yourself. So what we did is I did me and he did him. And when we see each other, we treat each other like best friends. I used to treat him like I had expectations of him to prove something. He needed to prove to me he was worthy of me. And that wasn't from me. That was from conditioning. That was from society. That was from whatever else. It doesn't even matter from where it came from. But when I had that awareness that that's just too much pressure for a relationship, I just dropped everything. I looked at my kids and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do me. I'm going to show these children what it's like to follow your dreams, to follow your mission, to fulfill your purpose just by being. That's what I'm going to do. And it's worked. It's worked because if I require to go fill up myself, I will actually say to everybody, it's like this unspoken rule in my family, hey guys, I need some time. I'm going to go have some time. And I go fill myself up. And then I'll say to them, hey guys, what do you require and my daughter say, I desire some time with you, mum. I want to go to the beach. Okay, cool. What do you want, son? And he'll tell me. And I say to my husband, what do you require? Because so often we are so worried about what we're getting and how we're feeling and what is right or wrong or fear. Did he cook dinner? Did you do this? Like, it's just not meant to be like that. Hi guys, I've just stopped for one moment to tell you a couple of things, okay? So the Release Your Blocks program is now open and I'm so excited. So if you are willing to have more joy, to have better relationships, to have more money and to really drop in to finding out what your superpowers are so you can complete your mission here and your purpose here on earth, this program is phenomenal. It is full of modules that help you to release all of the past limitations and mistaken beliefs that you've picked up while you've been here on earth. And it also helps you to perceive what it is that you need to know to take those next steps in your life and it also helps you to receive all of that information. If you want to know more about this, check out the notes and we can jump on a call and I will personally talk to you to see if you are a fit for the Release Your Blocks program. This is for people who are willing to do the work, that are willing to become more conscious and that are willing to take responsibility for themselves and have a life full of abundance and joy because that is what we are here for joy and abundance and love and gratitude is all a big part of this 12-week program and I would love to talk to you to see if you're a fit. So now I'll let you get back to the podcast. So what I ask you to do is to tap in and, and to see, you know, what is your relationship like? Is there expectations, unrealistic ones in there? Are you filling yourself up or you're expecting it to come from someone else? Are you so afraid of losing that person that you're not choosing more? And a lot of people who do my Relational Blocks program, it's actually one of the first things that we cover in our calls. They say, I'm afraid because I can see shifting. As soon as people sign up, they start getting changes and shifts. It's an energetic thing. And even before we start, it's amazing. And they say, we're worried because we worried our husbands or our wives, they won't follow us. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. There has actually been relationship split ups. It's going to happen anyway, you know? So it's very much about you being the very best version of you and inviting them to come along. They don't have to do as much work as you or hardcore do whatever, unless they desire it. But just by you saying, I'm over here, don't worry, you know, let's choose more. What would it take for us to have a life beyond ordinary and be joy and uncreate our relationship every day and start again tomorrow? The amount of people that hold on to resentment, have a fight once a year and go 10 years ago when you treated me like this, and then they bring up all of that repressed crap 
The amount of people that do that is way too high in this world. What is the point of being together because you feel like you're stuck together or maybe you've got kids together or maybe you've been together too long or you've got businesses or mortgages or whatever it might be. We get stuck in the structure of it rather than asking, you know, am I choosing to be with this person? If it's a no, okay, cool. What can I do about this? If it's a yes, I do love this person. I want to make it work cool, how can I make this work? Because you always have choice. And, you know, when I was 23 or whatever it was, I chose to leave my partner after seven years. My mother basically didn't talk to me. (laughs) Everyone was angry at me. Everyone thought I was not a very nice person because I went out on this massive journey to find myself. I was like a newborn in the world because I'd been with someone for seven years And I said to him when I broke up with him, love isn't enough. We're not happy. And I don't believe love is enough unless both of you are willing to work on your relationship and to say, what is the other person requiring? I'm going to fill me up. You go fill you up. And then what can we do for each other? Because a healthy respect is so important, but you must respect yourself first. And if you're in a relationship where the person is putting you down or making you feel less. I don't believe a relationship, a person has to bring the other person up. I believe that you bring yourself up, but if they don't encourage that higher frequency and vibration and they make you feel lower and they make you feel shittier and they make you feel smaller and not expansive, then I would be really starting to look at, am I choosing to be with this person? If so, what can I do to enhance it, to make it better? Because like I said, everything is a choice and there's actually no right or wrong with what you choose. You can go from an extremely volatile relationship where you're calling each other names and you don't trust each other. You can have a terrible relationship and totally and utterly transform it. But it does take two people. Children will never fix your relationship, a new car, a new house, um, a marriage, getting married after however many years is not going to fix your relationship. It is about fixing you. Everything is a mirror and whatever is reflecting back at you, if you, uh, if it's ego against ego, so if they're saying something to you and you're saying something back and there's a trigger going on in the middle, That is because there's a reflection going on and it's something internal in both of you that you have to work on. So then it's a lot more easier in the external. In short, your partner should be your best friend. You should always know when to say sorry. When you think about them, they should make you feel light and expansive like your heart swells. When I think about my partner, I literally get a smile on my face. I'm like, oh my God, how did I get so lucky? And then when I think we've been together from 16 years old, I think that's just crazy. And then I also acknowledge that our relationship is always growing. It's always changing. It's always shifting. It's not always perfect, but we have the tools to work through it, to change and shift anything. And every day we have a choice to be together or not. We are not stuck together because all of the money stuff, the house stuff, the kids stuff, the business stuff, All of that stuff is just stuff. That stuff can be organized. And anyone who is staying with people just for that, and there's no love, there's no anything, then that is just a choice. You're not really stuck. That is a mindset, right? So what I recommend you do is to, even if you have an amazing relationship, ask the question every day, what can I do today to make my relationship greater than yesterday. What can I do today to show that person how much I love them? What can I do today to fill up my cup so I have got so much love oozing out of me and gratitude that they fill up as well? What does our relationship require today? And what I said recently to my husband, because we've currently been shifting homes and businesses and all of that type of stuff, that life stuff, as I said, I think it's really important that, you know, we go out for dinner at least once a month. I think it's really important that we just be. I think it's really important that we just hang out. 
And the other thing I want to tell you guys as well is touching. Now, I never saw my parents touching a lot. Like different people are different, right? So we've got people that are like all over each other, constantly holding hands and stuff like that. Um, I'm from a big family and I have amazing parents, but they weren't like lovey-dovey holding hands. They were busy (laughs) and their parents were busy as well and so on and so forth. So sometimes this is something that comes down in the line, down the tribal line. And um, what I recommend you do, especially if you're feeling like you've got a little bit of a disconnect with your partner, is to stay on that same kind of frequency and growing is to touch. So it doesn't mean having to have sex, just literally walking past the person, putting your hand on their shoulder or putting your hand on the head or giving them a cuddle or doing whatever, but just acknowledging their bodies because bodies love being touched. And underneath every adult (laughs) is a child. We are all the same as we were when we were little. We just have more knowledge and our bodies grew. When I'm with my children, I'm constantly touching and cuddling and sniffing them and doing all sorts of stuff like, because I love them so much and I give them cuddles and I play with them and I dance with them and I'm always interacting with them. But sometimes that seems to disappear in relationships. So the fun, playful side can disappear, especially after you've had children or you've been in a long-term relationship because it just, you kind of get lazy because they're just there, you know? And this may or may not resonate with you, but I know for myself, it's really about taking that time out to fill up my own cup. And then if I'm feeling like I can't give to my partner, I can't give him a cuddle or I can't hold his hand or I just don't want him in my space, then I know I've got to go do some work. And I'll say to him, hey, um, I'm sorry, I just don't have the space right now. Can you please just give me a little bit of time? And he, of course, he's used to that now, but at the beginning he's like, what are you talking about? And then I just explained to him, I've just been doing a lot of energy work. I've been with the kids. I just need to go fill up myself. And then, you know, later on we'll spend some time together and we can watch a movie together, go for a walk or whatever it may be because they require to be filled up as well. And if they can't do it for themselves, if they're working all day and there's the kids and all that type of stuff, it's really important that we can be you know, to stop any type of conflict or anything like that, we can be that space for ourselves. And sometimes we can be the space for them if they can't be. And that's what a beautiful relationship is, you know, in those times without expectation in those times that they need to carry you, they can carry you and vice versa. But one thing I've noticed in my relationship is we were both low or both high. And I know that other relationships can be different where one person carries the other and they can fall in and out of love and all that different type of stuff. But for us, we both are both highly high impact. So if the other person is feeling a little bit depleted, the other person feels it instantly. So it's quite important for my husband and I to have a high vibration. So it's something I don't take my eye off. And if I do for a moment, I'm like, whoa, okay, what is going on in the relationship? What is required here? Because I come first and then my husband comes second and then my children come. And in my eyes, my children are the most important thing in the whole entire world. So that means I must look after me and then I must make sure he's okay. And that's what I teach in my relational blocks is I have an actual pyramid, if you can imagine right now, a triangle. And at the top, it's me and then it's husband, then it's children, and then it's work and clients and society underneath that. But what is happening and what I've noticed with a lot of the people I work with, especially mums, is it's flipped around and they think that society and work is the most important and then the kids and then the partner and then themselves and they're wondering why they are hitting burnout. So I hope this makes sense to you. I go much deeper into it with the different tools and processes with energy and mindset in the Relational Blocks program. But this is just a little bit of a snippet, a little bit of a story about my relationship and how you can go from pain to pleasure. Anything is fixable. Anything can be created more. And if every single day destroy and uncreate the relationships with everybody and everything, with your car, with your home, with your relationship, with your partner, with your kids, with your friendships, because that means you're not taking the baggage to the next day and you can start fresh. Choose who you desire to be. Make sure you treat your partner like your best friend. Make sure you're always talking to the higher self of your partner 
So give them the respect that they truly desire. And remember, everything is a mirror. So if you do have conflict, have a look at yourself as well, rather than just doing the blame game, look at yourself and go, okay, what part am I being in here? And the biggest piece of advice is always ask your partner, what do you require? What is happening here? How can I help? And do it with no judgment and awareness. And if you are in a relationship where there is abuse um, in no way, shape or form, if there is any physical abuse, that is just not okay because it goes so much deeper than the actual physical and even emotional abuse. Just because there's no scars doesn't mean it's not scarring. So when that type of stuff happens, if you do have an abusive partner, I do recommend that you talk to a counselor or a psychologist to go deeper into that because please remember you cannot change your partner. They can only change themselves just like they can't change you. Only you can change yourself. So thank you so much for joining and I'm so looking forward to seeing you next time. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining the Release Your Blocks podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear from you. So please leave a review and tell me what your favorite takeaway from today was. There is so much more from where this came from. You can also find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find more content, more coaching, and more guidance. Have a grand and glorious day, and I'll see you next time.